Coming up, the three by-elections this week told three different yet equally intriguing stories about the current state of play in English politics and what that means for the general election, which, according to Downing Street rumours, now looks likely to be called for November 2024. Stay tuned. I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, subscribe, and above all, share a link to this video with your social media contacts. This week, Rishi Sunak narrowly avoided becoming the first Prime Minister for 45 years to lose three seats at by-elections on the same day. 13 years of Tory misrule and the more recent Conservative Party travails over MPs' misconduct and Boris Johnson's proven litany of lies to Parliament gave us the possibility of three Conservative-held seats being up for grabs by the opposition parties. Johnson's old seat of Uxbridge and South Ryslip in West London gave Labour a shot at a seat that needed the swing well within Labour's current opinion poll tracker lead. On the night, a 6.7% swing to Labour left the Tories clinging on by a mere 495 votes after a recount, and that's down from 7,210. Disappointing, but remember, this seat has always been Conservative, and there were local factors that I'll get into later in this video. Selby and Ainsley in North Yorkshire is another seat that has always been Conservative held and was the seat where Johnson's sycophant Nigel Adams stepped aside in a fit of pique at not getting elevated to the House of Lords. Labour required an 18-point swing, but Labour managed a swing of 23.7% and a big majority of over 4,000. Gaining Selby has, in fact, set a record for the size of majority overturned by Labour at a by-election. And finally, Somerton and Froome down here in the West Country was another rural seat with a massive Tory majority, needing a 15-point swing to the Lib Dems for them to regain a seat that they lost in 2015. In the event, the Lib Dems achieved a swing of 29%, almost double what they needed, winning more than twice as many votes as the out-of-favour Tories. That will shock the many Tory MPs in seats down here in the South West, a region that the Lib Dems are now looking to dominate come the next general election. So let's take a deeper dive into each one of these results and try to explain what they might mean for the prospects of each party at the next general election. And first off, Uxbridge and South Ryslip, where Boris Johnson won more than half the vote at each of the last three contests. It even bucked the London trend to back Brexit and has been a Tory seat ever since its inception. Students dominate the university areas around Uxbridge and Colham, and the better educated demographic always skew towards progressive parties. And also the working class area of Usley is actually the most Labour friendly. But then posher South Ryslip is the main Tory territory where you'll find older owner occupiers and commuters. There's also a growing Asian community here which tends to skew towards the Tories. These differences in demographics may be one explanation for why Uxbridge has always been difficult for Labour in elections. At the last general election in 2019, Boris Johnson was defending the smallest majority of any Prime Minister since 1924, just over 5,000 votes, but despite Labour's best efforts, he actually increased that majority to over 7,000. Still, Labour only needed an eight-point swing, just half that suggested by the national polls, to win the seat for the very first time. But it proved not to be that simple. Both Tory and Labour have agreed that there was a local factor dominating the contest that rendered the national politics largely irrelevant. London Mayor Sadiq Khan is extending the London ultra-low emission zone, ULES, to include outer London boroughs within the M25. This will lead to a daily charge for driving cars which don't meet certain emission standards. And this is a constituency where around four in five households have at least one car and one in three have two or more. The Tories campaigned heavily in the constituency on the back of this unpopular measure unpopular in Hillingdon, that is, despite the fact that the Labour candidate, Danny Beals, came out against ULES for now, and despite the fact that the original ULES scheme was originally implemented by none other than one Boris Johnson. In his victory speech, the new Tory MP, Mr Tuckwell, even admitted that what he called Mr Khan's damaging and costly ULES policy lost Labour the seat. 
Again, a reminder that ULES was originally the brainchild of the Tory London Mayor Boris Johnson. Polling actually shows that a majority of Londoners still favour expanding the ULES, but it's much more popular among middle class professionals than low earners who can't afford to trade in spluttering old diesels. And that's the problem. Most people want these green measures, which are designed to prevent 18,000 excess deaths in London each year, but many of them can't afford to put their money where their brain is. With the Tory government restricting funding to the Labour-held mayoralty, Sadiq Khan has done his best to implement a decent scrappage scheme for those giving up dirtier vehicles, but he's constrained by the lack of funding from the Tory central government. There's another worrying trend here though, that measures across the board aimed at protecting the environment are being attacked by right-wing politicians, including many in the Tory party. The Tory press seem to be leading this narrative, putting pressure on government to restrict funding for environmental measures. The hatred stirred up against Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion is just part of this worrying trend that has also seen petty measures put in place by this government, making it more difficult for farmers to set up solar farms on their less productive land, bans on onshore wind farms and so on. I predict that after the next general election, the Tories will go further and become a party of climate denial, just like their cousins in the USA Republican Party. They know it's one way to fire up their base, and they will have taken note of the Gilets Jaunes movement in France, which was largely a reaction against environmental measures implemented by the French government. But look, the point is that it was this particular culture war that was the reason why the Uxbridge and South Ryslet result turned out the way it did. And even then, Labour still achieved a swing of almost 7%. But like me, you're probably asking the most important question about this particular by-election in Boris Johnson's old seat. What does Nadine Madnad Dorries, the one-woman Boris Johnson fan club, have to say? This is what she has tweeted. If the horrible, fictional, invented by the media, long Boris syndrome did exist, it would have been felt the worst in his own former constituency. The swing and the numbers show very clearly angry Tories won't turn out for Sunak. They know how to administer their own justice. You almost feel sorry for her, don't you? No, me neither. But compared to the Selby and Anstey result, the 7% swing to Labour in Uxbridge was as of nothing. Here in the North Yorkshire countryside, Labour achieved a record-breaking result. Almost everything about this constituency screams Tory heartland, and it's always been a Tory-held seat. Until now. Nigel Adams' decision to resign just because he was denied a peerage means Selby will have a change of MP. The demographics here don't favour Labour. More than a fifth of people are aged over 60. But this is one of the top 40 seats in England and Wales for mortgage holders, with 37% of households here having a mortgage. Rising interest rates clearly impacted the vote, and the result shows that Labour can win votes directly from the Tories in their heartlands throughout England, not just those with a Labour history. The almost 24% swing to Labour is the best that Labour has achieved this Parliament and the largest majority the party has ever overturned. And of course, by-elections are different to general elections and aren't a perfect predictor of performance. But a swing literally half this size would see Labour with a parliamentary majority at the next general election and would still be more than the record swing achieved by Tony Blair in 1997. And so, on to the third and final by-election in Somerton and Froome. In the West Country, the Tories face a different challenger, the Liberal Democrats, who made by-election history by overturning a record 24,000 Conservative majority in Tiverton and Honiton last year. And now they've added Somerton and Froome, by not just overturning another Tory majority of almost 20,000, but actually winning with a majority of over 11,000 themselves despite having the weakest parliamentary candidate in Sarah Dyke that I've ever seen interviewed. Here's an audio extract. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, there is obviously that it, it does have a look of affluence um, in, in the area. I mean, it's a beautiful area. We're very, very lucky to, to live in this part of the world. But there are pockets of deprivation. And, um, you know, there's... there's the... It's okay. 
Do you think? Looking. Take your time, don't we? Excuse me, because I'm just having my my coffee. Is don't worry. I thought I shouldn't have had the extra shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no. It's just because I've, I've drank coffee too far too quickly. Because <laughs> I haven't had a coffee and since about seven o'clock this morning. The coffee is strong as well. Right. What do you want to know? Something is a subject that I don't know anything about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to give you an answer for very sensibly. Or do, or what, on, on, the, on the sort of general economic state of the constituency? Um, well, I can talk... Yeah, I mean, there's pockets of deprivation. I mean, what else, you know, what can we, what can we say on that, really? I don't feel I, I don't feel that I'm prepared at all for for this, Amy. It's all getting a little bit um, above right. above my station, sorry. Well, you're about to stand it's in okay. the by-election. Yeah. You're going to get much, much. Yeah. You're going to get much, yeah, much no. e more exacting questioners than yeah. us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this, this is the day day two of. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, just, just get your glass of water. Yeah. Stop it. Imagine the winning margin if they'd actually had a decent candidate. The population here is older than the average and less exposed to interest rates with more than 43% of households owning their home without a mortgage. But they have been trending away from the Tories. The 2022 Somerset Council results were terrible for the Conservatives and the biggest falls were in the wards that make up Somerton and Froome. The Liberal Democrats were first in 10 of those 13 wards while the Tories only won one. The Greens won two. We can only wait in anticipation for the general election result for Jacob Rees-Mogg's Somerset constituency. This latest Tory loss to the Lib Dems is further evidence that they'll be fighting the next general election on two fronts. But those are my thoughts. What do the polling experts say? First up, polling oracle John Curtis who told the BBC that Uxbridge may raise questions about the potential fragility of support for Labour more broadly, but that Selby shows the tide is still a long way out for the Conservatives. They still have an awful long way to go. Curtis suggested that the Selby and Somerton result is far more indicative of the likely general election vote than Uxbridge with its local ULES factor. And former Theresa May pollster James Johnson of JL Partners agrees with Curtis, saying that although the Uxbridge result of a vastly reduced majority is still a silver lining for Sunak, nevertheless, Selby is arguably the most informative result of the night when we think about how things might develop in a general election. My final thought is this. Just who the hell are these people that are still voting Tory after 13 years where they've completely trashed the UK economy and our international standing, have all but broken the NHS, dumped shit in our rivers and coastal waters, destroyed the court system, lied, partied and took billions of pounds of public money and handed it over to their donors and cronies under the pretext of emergency Covid measures, reduced our standard of living to the point where we're being overtaken by Slovenia and Poland, taken away our rights of civil protest, our employment protection rights and our rights to live and work in 27 other European countries. These remaining Tory voters really need to give their heads a serious wobble.